Hello and welcome to the weekly Hukula webinar. Today is Saturday, June 30th. And today, once again, we're honored to have James Charles channeling for us. And uh, James is going to lead the uh, blessings and introductions and announcements today while I go take care of some glare in the room. Good morning, everybody. It's good to see you. We're starting earlier than usual because usually we have technical difficulties, but today we don't. So that's a wonderful thing. I wanted to make a couple announcements first, though. First of all, the uh, the workshop is August 16th through the 21st. And you can sign up on that on human colony or ucolo.org. And it's going to be very good. We're getting the itinerary for that now. Things are moving around. We're not sure all the different things that are going to be uh, talked about this time, but uh, believe me, it's going to be a it's going to be fun. Oh, our first two were really a lot of fun. So, uh, Max is learning to do air bending, and so he is going to be teaching that. I believe I, I that, that's very curious to me. I'd like to to see that. So, anyway, we're going to be having that from uh, August 16th to the 21st. And we have about five or six people signed up already. So, and I know there's several more wanting to, but they just haven't done it yet. So also the book is out. For those of you who'd like to give it a look, the audio book is also available, but he didn't tell me where that is available at. So write to Max, if you want the audio book, for um, uh, from the galaxy with love, uh, ask Max where you can find that. I am not sure. He gave me a copy of it, and we just downloaded it on a disc. So we're gonna li listen to it on our way back home. I am in lovely Illinois, Champaign, Illinois today. We're on vacation. Uh, <clears throat> there's a few of us staying with Mark Zinzo. For uh, a while, I'll be home next week, but um, I won't be doing a webinar next week. So, um, let's introduce the people in the room. Oh, yes. The introduce the people in the room. I can't see, I so I'll let her do that. <clears throat> yes. How do you get the names? Oh, oh. just do this. Or, or is no. it a touch screen? No. How's that look? there a little more yeah how's that is that better all right so today on online we have uh tariq stephanie sheer salam um um i'm not sure it's reinheld uh payola mark eva and Christine, and then here in the room, Angie, Jim, and Charlie, Chuck. or Chuck, Chuck, and um, and then Mark is also here. So, and now we're also going to take some requests for who you want me to channel today. Any requests? <clears throat> Odin. Odin. Okay. Archangel Gabriel. Gabriel, okay. Anybody else? Well, of course, Elijah. Elijah. Anybody else? Grindel, always. <laughs> oh, Grindel. <laughs> Ooh, Amanda said Mother Peel. You know, the Hawaiian Mother Islands? Who? The, the Peel, you know, the Hawaiian Islands, the uh, volcano? Oh, I uh, Pele? Pele, that's it. All right. Is that the name of the volcano? Well, that's the goddess behind the volcano. Goddess Pele. Yes. Uh, Pele. Um, yes? Maybe to occur to see how the meetings went. To occur, to occur the oh, meetings? Yeah. Definitely. The me meetings just were over, so uh, somebody requested to occur. 
All right. And also, who wants to give blessings today? Anybody? Welcome the audience. All right. I can say fun... to all. I didn't hear that. What? Blessed be to all. Oh, very good. Uh, I'll do oh, Angie will do a blessing. <clears throat> and then we can get started. Let us all join together and find a time to share. Let us be of one heart and one mind and understanding reach out to one another so that you may know who you are with and who is on your side be careful to know of yourself first and how well you are dealing with your life let all things be and focus on god and his delights well that was different that was a very different one. Anyway, I'm going to say one short one as well. I just want to uh, thank God for this uh, time of fellowship that uh, you brought us all together. Let, us, let it be a time of learning and a time of inspiration, a time when we all can all bond together and learn something and perhaps um, grow. All right. Amen. Alrighty, I'm going to do a little meditation, and um, we'll see who comes through first. One moment. Greetings. I am Elijah. Welcome. Today I just want to speak very briefly to you about your missions and how to go about them. Many of you are teachers and many of you have work to do with other people one-on-one. -on -one. Remember this, when you are working one-on-one -on -one with people, you must Remove the negativity from yourself before that you can even start to work with anybody else. Remember, there are Bible verses and scriptures that say, remove the moat from your eye before you can ever remove the lumber from anyone else's. <clears throat> Loosely translated, that means Get rid of your negativity before you can get rid of theirs. And if you look inside, if you look at yourself, do an introspective of yourself, you will see that sometimes you're not ready to go out and tell people how to live their lives or, or train them up in the way they should go because you need some work yourself. It's not that you have to be perfect. <clears throat> that's not what I'm saying. You do not have to be perfect to go out and deal with the world and to bring them information and goodness and kindness. But if you are dealing with people with similar problems as your own, then you must 
know thyself and you must correct yourself before you can ever correct anyone else. And I know that that makes sense to you because many of you have dealt with people that have come to you and said to you, this is what I think that you should do, or this is something that I think you should correct in yourself. But they themselves were someone that were not perfect and you knew that they had problems in that area too and so you didn't feel right taking their uh advice because you knew that they also had that problem is there any questions today hello all right if there's none i will let somebody else come through have a good day <laughs> Greeting, this is Takur. I am here to give you the um, information about the meetings. Is there any questions first? Let me just say that the meetings concluded yesterday. It was a long period of time. These meetings went longer than usual. And there was a lot to be learned from them. Many of the governments of the world were happy to speak to us toward the end. It took them a while to open up this time because of all the different things that are happening around the world. But when we got into uh, back into medical questions yeah, and back sure. into uh, help with physical ailments with their people there was a lot of response and i believe that we are getting closer to a program where we can bring the sick to us wow. and um that would be a wonderful thing but still there are major countries that have some opposition to this but it is closer than it ever has been but that does not mean that it is going to happen within six months or a year, but just that it is being discussed in a greater way than ever before. Are there any questions? That was the biggest of the news, in my opinion. There were, they also spoke about many of the pharmaceuticals uh, and healing products for humanity, and they've actually starting to accept some of those thoughts as well because some of these would require medication to for healing of the mankind so they would actually question us about what kind of medication are these would we have to use alien technology would we have to do these kinds of things and so it was very productive at this point any questions? Sheer was first in line. Hello, Takur. How are you? Greetings, Sheer. I am fine. Um, well, first of all, I want to ask, the meeting was extremely long. Did people give multiple speeches, certain people in the group? Yes, there were uh, multiple speeches by some humans. However, um, some refrained from doing their speech because the information was already covered to some point. There was a lot more discussion this time toward the end than I had seen in uh, several years. Um, that, I thought, was a very positive thing. Also, you said that um, hopefully six months from now people will be allowed to go physically to the colonies to get a medical treatment. Well, I did, not, that is, I did not say that. I said, don't expect that to happen ah. right away. 
I said don't expect that right away. But they are getting closer to it than they ever have been before. I would love to see that within the six-month period that they do come and uh, and there is some discussion on them coming through in that way. But I think we'll have to wait till the next meeting before they uh, do any more discussion on that. Uh, toward the end also, the very last day, uh, things sort of went back to world views of uh, war and different things that are happening on your planet. They started to discuss if we were going to intercede or help or if the, anybody is helping uh, their enemies or, or whatever. So, of course... No alien intervention is permitted. Um, one last question. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, I know that in every meeting, I think towards the end, you ask which uh, countries are for or against uh, first contact, and I think the last time you had the most votes for yes. uh, first contact. Did you held the same kind of vote this time? It, it was actually very similar to last time. There was no major changes in that uh, because of the way that the countries are interacting one with another. So at this time, things are actually deteriorating between some countries but they're actually accelerating and becoming more positive with some of the talks and some alien uh, interventions in the sense that they want to actually talk to us a little bit more. I think some of them want us to ally with them, but we cannot do that. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Anything else? <clears throat> okay. Um, Brian Sims asks, are there any new species that have joined Gurkfiknir? That We are up to eight species. I know that um, I don't think that there's any been for quite a while. I know there hasn't. So the same eight are still here. Any other questions? Um, I'm not sure if I missed this or not, but um, uh, what are the prospects for site to site? What has to happen before uh, they might be willing to accept that? You well, it wouldn't the, be for six months, but. Yes, the problem with site to site is exactly this. People leaving the planet um, without permission is I know they would not allow that at all. They're starting to think that if people have permission, they might be able to allow them to leave site to site, to go from, uh, from the planet to the ships or wherever, and have people, if they have permission, to uh, come from the ships to the planet. Now, there's a lot of turmoil over that because a lot of people do not want aliens on the planet and think that that would cause a lot of problems, think that that would cause people to panic if they were to see somebody, but um, <clears throat> there is a lot of discussion going into that. Rules and regulations have to be written for it, and so at this point, it's in the basic discussion about how it would even work. So they are looking, they would prefer that, human, that, that humans would just get permission to leave, but they wouldn't want aliens to come uh, on the planet. That seems to be the consensus. But that's really not a fair exchange program. So there's a lot of uh, work going into that. But at least they're discussing it. Well, that's progress. Thank you very much. Shir has some more questions. I always have more questions to the curve. And 
Ticker, I was wondering, um, how should I put it? Um, first of all, another question, not that related, but Saint Germain spoke about uh, having gold in each body around the heart, and that is one of the things that allow us to do magic. If we will have more gold put in our body next to the heart, will it allow us to do magic in a greater way? That's a very good question. Uh, I Did everybody hear what he said? There is n proof that there is gold around the heart. Very, very, very small quantities, but it is part of your physiology and part of most physiologies of uh, beings. If you put more gold around your heart, will it be helpful with magic? Uh, it could be, but you have to remember this. Balance is also important. I believe that the balance of gold that is around the heart keeps the heart moving and keeps it active and, and um, it is one of the things that keeps that movement steady but if you put too much it might be overworked or affect the heart in some way you would have to find a way to have it just affect your magic so perhaps the gold would have to go somewhere other than around the heart for it to be effective for magic i was thinking about uh, an infusion from you or someone else if something like that is being operated on different races we're not you mean adding gold uh, yeah no we're not we're not uh, doing that at this time no I see and the question I just remember what I want to ask uh, it's about the Yahil I know that since 2015 every year they're saying that they are going to come here they're going to do um, <laughs> You know, yes, you know what I'm talking about. And also this year was predicted that this is the year when they're going to come no matter what. And they're always uh, threatening on doing so. Uh, can you tell me if they're going to do so? What is happening on this agenda? Uh, I will be very honest with you, Sheer. I do not see them planning to come this year. Who has said that they were coming this year? Various... Uh, channeling throughout the years i remember ever since i yeah. came to channeling they you know they always uh, speaking about 2015 now it's 2016 and okay so the each reason, year the reason that you're not seeing that first contact come the you will be the first that has been designated and it still has not changed the you you will be the first species to come to Earth, or at least so far, they're they're still designated as the first species to come to Earth. However, with the way that the Earth is, and with the uh, the threats of war and different things, it's just not a convenient time for a first contact situation. There's too much uh, rumors of war, and if they saw these uh, ships coming without permission, they would have to get permission from your uh, government. If they saw this start to happen without permission, uh, you better believe that there would be some great fear by your governments, and they would probably try to shoot them down. But... Um, I believe that first contact will come, but I could not tell you when. I see, and I know that it was rumored that this year maybe a certain inner species will show itself. It was from a reliable source. Now that sounds possible. And Let me talk to you about that for a second. There are many species out there. It's it's not just that there's one species. You know that there are a lot, a lot, but not all of them are interested in coming to Earth. Not all of them are interested in uh, talking to humans or or even being around humans. But there are certain species 
that do want to have contact I want people to know that they exist because they feel that this will um, rush or hurry first contact. The more people that know that they exist, the more people that uh, understand that they are friendly, this might uh, cause first contact to move faster. So there will be a lot of sightings this year. There will be some per exposure to more alien things this year. But this is just to get your people used to seeing them and knowing that they are around. It does not mean that they will not be afraid of them yet, but you have to understand if, if we are showing ourselves, if we are around, if we are making a contact effort and not battling you, don't you think that there is some friendliness there? Don't you see that there's some curiosity there? Don't you think that we want to meet you? Of course we do. We want to see you face to face. We want to come and, and talk to humans. Uh, but your people are not ready to accept that yet. And the more uh, disclosure we can give, and this is part of disclosure, them showing themselves. Disclosure being giving information to the world about aliens there's disclosure everywhere in the world. It's just a piece here, a piece there. But that's how it has to be. The whole world cannot have one big disclosure, a, a big announcement about aliens are real and they're friendly and all that. But you can have uh, several uh, sightings. You can have information being given. You can find things on the Internet that tells about Oh, different kinds of aliens. There's several sites that does that and several places where you can find information on who and and what we are doing. Um, you say, where are these sites? You can find them if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say anything. If, if I do, they'll take them off. Governments do not like this kind of information being given. They know that it's disclosure. They know that it's it's helpful for people to see this so that they, they understand more. So that is that is the information about that. Can inner species, the ones that are already inside the Earth, are they allowed to travel back and forth to space according to galactic laws? Um, yes, they're grandfathered in because they are part of the Earth. But you have to understand, even some of the uh, inner Earth people are fourth dimensional uh, or other dimensional other than third dimensional. And so you can't really see them. But there are many that you can. And they do go off and on Earth. They have, and usually they use waterways such as the oceans. They have underground areas to the oceans and go out through the ocean areas or the the Great Lakes or uh, big bodies of water uh, because usually there's no no population there and less people can see them and they can do their dealings over great bodies of water. Is it allowed for them to take someone from the earth outside of the earth? No, not at this time. Mm. Is it allowed for them to take someone from the Earth to their inner species because it's on the same Earth? I did not. You mean someone take someone to the inner Earth? Yes. Let's say I'm sitting at home and there's a hole uh, beneath That's me. Been done. me. Yes. That is possible. Yeah, that has been done. Yes. It's permitted according to galactic laws? It's, that means the galactic law is fine. But what they do is they erase their memory when they return to the planet. They don't want a lot of people trying to visit them. But they do have certain times, certain people that they need to contact for certain reasons. And they will bring them down into uh, Middle Earth or whatever you want to call it, Inner Earth, 
some places, and they will have uh, conferences with them. Um, very few of them ever remember these, but some do. And as we um, move forward, they're, they are becoming more active with this kind of um, activity. And usually it's people that uh, live alone and or can be out of sight for quite a while so that they can talk to them. Okay, the <laughs> question, do they have to wipe their memory or is it like, is it something according to Galactic Protocol or is it something that... No, no, no that's they something they do. That's not, that actually is not part of Galactic Protocol because they were here before the Galactic Law was written about uh, interaction with humans. There, they tried to get laws passed about that, but they did not go through because uh, I, I'm not sure why, but they just did not. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, next in the question queue, we have uh, Micheline. Greetings. Can you unmute, Micheline? Oh. Hi, Tucker. Greetings. Hello, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Good, I'm so glad I, we haven't spoken in a little while. Um, you know, I'll just bring us back to um, just the political agendas of the world at the moment. Um, you know I'm close to a chief of staff to the yes. Minister of International Development in Canada, and you know who he is. Yes, I and, do. Uh, and, of course, you know, with all the, that I've been learning the last couple of, I would say, maybe a year and a half or so, um, I've been sharing some things, and he is in complete disbelief, and he's kind of very high up there as uh, pol political staffers go, and, you know, people think that corruption is... Um, is deep within, but I'm just wondering, you were talking about the talks earlier and, and, and sometimes it's not the leader of the world who shows up, but uh, a representative. Correct. And no. I'm just wondering if we're talking about, are we talking about members of the prime minister's office or? Yes, you are. Uh, let me tell you something very quickly. Mm. If you were, ha were going to be part of these meetings, you wouldn't tell anyone that you knew anything about them. And you would not claim to believe in aliens, and you would not claim to uh, even know about them. Because if you do, then your reputation can be questioned. Of course. And you can be, so although they may be telling you they do not believe in aliens, they do not believe in that, that, any, uh, that there is any such things as these meetings, they know about them, believe me, and they okay. are part of them. But to admit it is to sign their own uh, death warrant in some senses because they would be booted out. Yeah. Now, so do not, do not think that they do not know. They do know. They understand and they are aware and they go to these meetings if they are sent. Some are too busy to be sent at times, but if they're, if someone cannot go, they can be sent. And if you ever notice that your director or whatever he is, is out of town for uh, a few days, mm -hmm. where do they go? They say they're going here or there, but sometimes they go to these meetings, if, okay. they, if indeed those meetings are going on. Okay. Now, the, the G7 talks, they took place in Quebec City. And um, I'm just wondering, were you on, were, did they discuss the meetings that were coming up with you guys? Because it happened, it was just before you. Yes. Um, there was, at the G7, there was no mention of us at all because oh, okay. there were too many um, no, uh, un what is the word? They they could, did not have the uh, clearance to 
have that kind of information. There okay. was a lot of people that did not have higher clearance for that kind of information. And so with that, they could not say anything about what was going to happen at the uh, worldwide meetings. So, and also they do not want them to uh, know about them for other reasons as well. So, but the clearance issue is the big issue. Okay, and, and one more question I know about Canada again. I'm just wondering the, what, what questions were asked by the Canadian representatives? It, was Trudeau there? Or? Yes, Trudeau was there. Mm -hmm. He and, was there for three days of, of the nine. Wow. And was he accompanied by somebody or was he alone? Yes, he had people with him. I do not know all who was with him. Um, uh, there was two people with him. Okay. But what, can I just know, it, was it a, a lady and a man? Let me think. It was a, there was a lady and yes, a lady and a man. Okay. All right. Because, you know, I, I rub shoulders with these people, so I, I meet them. I don't know them very well because they, they work with the person that I know who is uh, a chief of staff. But um, it's just very interesting. I, I mean, I see them at parties. and Absolutely. And, you know who they are. Yes. I know who, yeah, I know who they are. I'm just wondering, do they know that I know? <laughs> no, they don't know that you know. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> That's kind of good. That's a it good would thing. be one of those clearance things. For you to um, know, there would have to be a clearance, and they do not see you as someone with any clearance. But oh, you found not. your information by other means, so yeah. that was that is something different altogether. Now the people they know that there are people out here in the world that uh, get their information from us or from from other sources, but they. They, whenever they come to look at the sources with uh, at the meetings, they sort of say, N nobody really knows what's going on. They're just, it's all entertainment. And they, that's how, what the, the word they spread, that they are, this is just entertainment and that we don't know really what's going on and things mm. of that nature. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, Takur, and I'm sure we'll have uh, some talk very soon. Excellent. Okay, bye-bye. All right, Christine is next. Christine? Hello, Takur. Greetings. Um, I was wondering if you could tell me, um, was the Trump administration there or the Democrats and Republicans or... Anyone? Yes, um, the Trump administration was there. Um, unlike the first meeting, uh, Donald did speak quite a bit this time. Wow. The first meeting we, that uh, he was attended with us, he said hardly a word. But this time, he was very vocal. Was it encouraging or? Well... Some of it was, and some of it wasn't. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I really don't want to discuss what each individual politician spoke mm -hmm. about, because okay. that would throw uh, different lights on the uh, different kind of opinions and thoughts on what is being discussed. But That's true. Uh, let me understand, uh, let me give you an understanding that everything is brought into a neutral category at the beginning and then it becomes discussed. charged and yes so um but we try to discuss neutrality quite a lot because much of much of their discussion is about uh allies and helping other species helping each them with their uh, problems without being part of their, without people knowing that they're doing that. So it's, it's sort of a little clandestine, if that's the right word. 
Okay. But we do not we do not do that, and neither okay. does any of the upright, upstanding species. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Trinity is next. Trinity. <laughs> Hello, Takura. You know me more as Safira. Greetings. <laughs> Long time no talk with. Uh, so I it have two questions. Yeah, thank you very much. Same here. I have two questions, please. One is about site to site, and the other is about the government meeting. Yes. Um, I've met many people through the course of the last 10 years or so that say they have been physically on ships, even now. So I'm I wondering, this, this government ban on going to the ships, is that just for your federation? How do how does it work that other people get to go and... and well, they are, going, they are going against galactic law, but there had been some that were willing to do this. There was a, a group of Yu Yil, there was a group of Octorians that were uh, that were actually picking people up and taking them for joy rides. And um, <laughs> this stopped within the last eight months. Mm, there, okay. there is way too much surveillance. You see, there was a point uh, where uh, the surveillance wasn't that bad and they could get away from going to isolated areas and picking people up. Now you say some of these people weren't in isolated areas. They had to go there. Either that or they went in the astral. They did not go physically. So, mm -hmm. yes, some people will tell you that they've been on ships and they've only been on them in the astral. Some people say they have been on ships and they actually were uh, on a joy ride with the Yu Yil or the uh, Octorians. Not the Yu Yil or Octorians that are associated with us, but they are more the uh, independent ones. So, okay. but they they were doing that, yes. And it wasn't legal, but they didn't get caught. <laughs> okay, thank you. My second question about the government meeting, I don't know if you can say this or not, but if you were given the okay, for example, let's take Donald Trump. If he said, okay, I am willing to now receive whatever advice you have for me. And so can, I, you, can you share what kind of advice you would give if there was that openness and that willingness to receive it? He is willing to receive some sorts of advice. He is starting a, a program called uh, uh, something with space that is going to be militarily based. And so he is very open about that and that he doesn't want anybody to uh, be, doesn't want anybody to mess with that. That's basically what he was saying. And, okay. um, and we, we would never do that. We would never mess with your programs, your space programs and all these things. So uh, that is not who we are. We, our worry is that he might try to mess with us. <laughs> in right. some way but um yes well, there are it, times when the, go ahead i'm so, forgive me forgive me to care oh that's all right i didn't um, mean to no, interrupt you I, I think i got off topic just a little bit but <laughs> uh, okay so, so concerning that concerning that topic then um how does the galactic count how do the galactic councils feel about a military base space program because some people in the disclosure field are afraid that you know this is not what this is not the idea behind you know intergalactic communication how do well, you how does the councils feel about the military well the galactic space? the galactic council says this is your planet you can do whatever you want you could you can send up space uh, uh, ships you can have satellites you can do whatever you want with your planet this is your planet we have no say about what you do with your planet and so it does not uh, interfere with galactic law at all because this is something that your governments are choosing to do 
and we have nothing to do with it. Well, what if that military program would be to control more of the intergalactic communication with well, Earth and maybe prevent it? First of all, they couldn't because we're, we're too far advanced. Uh, someone would be able to defeat them because, of course, uh, they're, they're not nearly as advanced. Even though their secret space program is incredibly advanced, uh, we're talking about weaponry and warfare, which is mm -hmm. it's part of that, but the, it's not as advanced as their actual understanding of science and moving into quantum fields. Now, let me also tell you that if they were to start something, that would be against galactic law and uh, there would be consequences to that. Okay. So I still would like to ask you again, because you yes. very politely sidestepped <laughs> the question. Yes, I, I get off topic sometimes. <laughs> no, 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 not for that reason. Um, so what advice would you actually give? What would you say to, I'm just picking Donald Trump as an example. It could be any particular government leader. So let's would, say Donald Trump for America. What advice would I give him? Yes, yes. Uh, I am not a political leader, and so it, my advice probably wouldn't seem very interesting to him. Um, but my advice would be to uh, attach himself to the thoughts of the people at the moment, to uh, gather an insight of what they feel about him. Not that it matters to him so much, but he needs to know how he looks to his people and to the world. And I think that he has no uh, understanding of that whatsoever. And, and I think he doesn't really care. But I think that if he did, he might temper some things, but maybe not. Well, I heard that he just pretends to be a little bit crazy and a little bit very well, well a little bit. It, uh, yeah. You see, you, know, uh, you see it works for him in some ways. Right. For example, if he didn't, if North Korea, if the North Korean president didn't think that he was a little bit crazy and a little bit unpredictable, maybe he would not have capitulated so quickly. This and agree to peace. This is true. Absolutely correct. So therefore, maybe I heard from some disclosure uh, groups that he's actually a very uh, advanced light worker, President Trump, but he um, plays a certain game as to disarm his enemies from thinking that to take him no. seriously. Seriously, do you, What do you think about that? Mm. I think that the definition of a light worker is in question there. <laughs> but even even the dark can bring eventually the light together the and do dark great things. Right? There for a purpose to make the light look better, of course. But mm -hmm. once you, yeah. if you call someone that's spreading darkness or 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 not actually caring about the light, we will just say it that way. Mm -hmm. A light worker. I don't think that. I think that a light worker is aware of what he is doing. Yes, and I heard that he is aware. He just has to, for the sake of the safety of himself and his family, um, pretend not to be as aware as he is. Does that make sense? Mm, not really. <laughs> it's okay. I will. I will go now and let someone else. But thank you very much for your for your answers. And You're welcome. It's always thank you. A great thank you. joy to be here, even though it takes me so long. <laughs> to get here. Thank to you. Have. Thank you. I'd like to uh, read a question from the YouTube chat. Uh, Liney writes, is Terra Ha discussed much at the meetings? Any mm -hmm. talk of us humans visiting there? Terra Ha is the next step in your advancement or the next place that you will go after uh, in your evolution of densities. Now, there are all kinds of evolutions, 
your next step in evolution will be telepathy, but your mm -hmm. next step in density evolution will be Terra Ha. Terra Ha is in another density. And there are those that uh, talk about Terra Ha as if it is uh, right here, right now. And it yeah. is in the sense that it overlaps the third dimension and, and the fifth dimension overlaps the fourth, etc. But many, many people are not ready to go there yet and they don't discuss it. Uh, it's not discussed at the meetings. It is something that is... Uh, uh, it's too far away yet for people to be... Uh, this, it, to discuss it unless... They are have been preparing for it uh, all their lives, or unless they are so prepared to move into the next density that they actually do. Most of the time, the people that move into the next density without dying are the monks that spend 40 and 50 and 60 years just uh, preparing themselves. They they can reach a state of levitation. They can read a, reach a state where they can send out their energy. They can reach uh, a state where they're less than human because their density is already changing. And those are the ones that translate into the next dimension. Thank but you there are much. those that are ready in some ways. Some... Uh, that have finished their missions and have been working for this for a long time uh, will be able to translate. But most of the time, these people are by themselves that you cannot have distractions. You cannot have uh, anything. This is a time of solitude, quiet, and you, you have to be very uh, devout and send all your energies into the spirit and the spirit will uh, become a more and more and more part of you as you become uh, more part of it. Does that make sense to you? It makes sense to me. Uh, Shear is next, I believe, for more questions. <laughs> Hello again. Hello. Um, well, my question is this. Um, I remember that a couple of years back there were a very important meeting between the alien races in Alpha Centauri or something like that. Yes. And it was almost uh, passed um, a rule and regulation that uh, aliens could come to the Earth within a year time. It was like on 49% um if, yes for doing that stage if you remember that meeting i'm trying to yes remember this uh that during that period of time earth was in a very different state of reality and as time has moved on the reality of the earth has changed in some ways and so that future probability had changed to a improbability or more of an improbability than a probability. Remember, the future is, future is never true until all the decisions and all the, the people have uh, made up their mind how they're going to live their life. The future is changed every day by decisions. And so you can see a probable future from one point to this point out here. But if you make decisions away from this probable thought process or this probable outcome, then you will change that outcome. Does that make sense to you? I, yes. I wish I said it better. I actually learned statistic right now, so. Yeah. Um, Statistics, that's a very good thing to how to say it your statistics of course math is always true but when you're dealing with humanity 
um, you're dealing with uh, changing of minds, different decisions. Humans have free will to change their minds and do what they will. So they can change their mind. They may say, I'm going to school next year, but then change their mind and not do it. This changes their future completely. Um, the question is more about, is there going to be another meeting in this kind of sense that the alien races is going to meet among themselves, going to have a civilized conversation and going to have serious talks about the the earth and how things are going to play along the same in the same way that it was in that meeting in the same gravity perhaps not the same gravity but there are many different councils alliances federations all doing and having meetings all of them are meeting all of them are discussing uh, earth at this time Earth is a very important place. So they're all um, interacting together. We all speak together. We may have different ideas about how to proceed. We have different ideas about uh, what uh, Earthlings can understand. We all have our different means and ways of doing what we do. The thing is, discussion will never stop about Earth until earth is part of the galaxy uh, they have got to accept first contact and then the galaxy can uh speak to them directly if you will but of course there are so many uh councils out there so many uh different federations that are having meetings monthly sometimes weekly sometimes uh, every six months by your time or eight months or whatever. They're discussing and having these kinds of meetings all the time. And letting, they're predicting when they can come or when the Yu Yu can come or when first contact is uh, going to be able to be appreciated enough to not be a, a sign of uh, a war coming from the sky. So there are many things to consider. I see. Um, could the galactic or the universal council come and take someone side to side if they wish or see it's if it's fit and did he ever did something like that? Well, if they break their own rules, that would be uh, very sad what kind of council would they be? But they would have to ask permission first from your uh, pol political beings and from your political areas to take someone off the planet. They couldn't really just do it and be in the, uh, not being, uh, breaking their own laws, so to speak. Okay. And uh, second of all, if you're going to have your spaceships come in here, I suggest if you can play like Ripple of the Grateful Dead or something like that, just put a lot of music from your spaceship. That no one is going to run away with fear when they hear Jerry Garcia uh, singing Ripple, I think. So this is... Um, I, I'm not familiar with that song, but I do... Uh think that music will be a part of first contact in some way but i think that to for us to be taken seriously or for the you heal to be taken seriously there would be an announcement first and then there would be the first contact and i believe your governments will have to know about these things ahead of time and they will demand i am sure that they know exactly what is going to be done and where. So, yes, music may be part of it. There's still so many discussions on how first contact must look to the people. Probable futures. Remember, I was talking about that. Sometimes it looks this way. Sometimes it looks this way. It changes with the um, 
the p attitudes of the people. And so right now, first contact would might look very different than it did uh, when they were discussing it five years ago. Okay. Um, once again, thank you very much. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. Well, I don't see any more questions in the queue, but uh, when you just mentioned probable futures, you stimulated one for me. Of the various timelines that uh, are branching off from the current moments, how many of them have to lead to first contact to benefit the galaxy or the universe? Well, that's an interesting question because in every single timeline, there is a first contact. It's not in the same place, but it, in every single timeline, there's a first contact and there's that uh, that ability to move forward. Now, in some, there are some timelines where the Earth ceases to exist because it blows itself up or whatever. There's uh, some kind of uh, uh, virus or disease that wipes out most of the population. Most timelines are very similar to the one that you are in right now. So they will all have a probable future of a first contact. Well, that's very reassuring. Thank you. I believe that concludes all the questions we have for you. Thanks for joining and so us today. I will bring someone else. Much love and have a wonderful day, everyone. Goodbye, Namaste. Tucker. Thank you, Tucker. Greetings, this is Gabriel. Welcome, thank you. I heard someone call my name. Well, Iwa has the first question. Eva, how are you? Thank you so much for coming. Um, you gave us such an amazing advice during the workshop we had in Densville. It was, it was really remarkable um, the way you spoke straight to the point specifically to me. Um, took me some time to take your advice, uh, but um, I assume I did. The uh, humans are sometimes hesitant to take advice because they know it will change the way they are living their life. Yeah. But remember, if it changes it for the better, it is a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, it seems to be in, in general, this is uh, an amazing um, changing time in my life in um, almost each areas, including my work. And... Um, I'd like to ask you for advice in this subject because it seems like I'm supposed to leave my current work, but I don't see anything else opening up. So that's a strange place to be. And um, I know you are master advisor, so I would love to hear from you. Many find themselves in places like this all the time. They've either lost their job and do not know where to go, or they want to leave their present job and are looking for something else. The thing is about that is that you must ask and pray to God for his guidance, for his leadership ability, and for he knows who you are, so he can bring you the greatest gifts that you can have the greatest job that you can have but remember this 
much of it, it depends on your belief system. Believe that God can do it, and he can. Believe that it can be, and it will be. Many people have a hard time believing in themselves, and so that is the ultimate disappointment to them, because if they don't believe in themselves, it's hard to believe in other things. It's hard to believe in anything outside when you, when you have doubts with yourself. So bring God in and make sure that you believe in yourself. I know that you can believe in God without believing in yourself, but when you believe in yourself, you are using your belief in God because God created you. And if you want to be who he made you to be, then you will believe in yourself. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yes, and it I, does. I and meditate. sometimes people have a hard time with that. They, But once you believe in yourself, then you can start moving outward. It's like that with many things. The inside has to be cured and cleared before the outside can show it. When you look into a mirror and mirror and you see this grouchy old face in the mirror, you know that there's something wrong. But you cannot change the face in the mirror without changing the face that is. Find your trueness with yourself first, and then all things will come into play afterwards. Things will be much better for you, because once you, you are your true self, you are the happiest person, because you are the person God made you to be, and that is a delight. Okay, thank you so much. My other question is in a general um, matter. I am still trying to believe that even um, the president in United States does such a harm. Um, at the same time, that there is something in general which will come up positive as transformation. Um, is there anything of that sort, or am I just really optimistic here? It, it is not my general thoughts to enter a political discussion. However, I would say this. There is much positivity coming to this realm from him already, although there is also much negativity coming to this realm from him and others. There are much worse scenarios than what you see before you. Embrace that he is doing his best. Embrace that he is truly working very hard. And embrace that he actually wants to help the people. That is his whole stance. Although he may have a harsh exterior and speak in different ways than you may think acceptable, positivity still can come. And we are trying to help and guide the situations as best as possible. Have faith and speak positively about all peoples. I know, I know this does not answer your question completely, but there is no complete answer for that question. For once again, the future has not yet seen.
I loved hearing that he has positive intentions. That made me feel very good. Thank you so much. He does. He absolutely does have positive intentions. Although he does not go about them the way most people would wish, that does not make it less positive. But I understand your concern. But once again, everyone must pray that the right things come through, that things turn out right. Your prayers are powerful. Your prayers are powerful. Thank you. You are welcome and be blessed. I feel blessed right now. Excellent. Trinity is next in the queue. Yes. Gabriel, thank you so much and many things and thank you for your loving words. Thank you. I have You're two welcome. I have two questions. Uh, forgive me when I cannot phrase them properly because it is a surprise who's coming and it's sometimes hard to prepare the proper question. So forgive me for that. My first question has to do with the spiritual world. Uh, when <clears throat> physical bodies die and our spirits continue, I have heard different theories. For example, um, do not go into the light because it is a reincarnation trap that we're forced to come back to the earth, uh, or we go through the light and we meet Jesus, or um, when we when we really pass, our spirits then go to the extraterrestrial planets. I mean, it's so confusing about the order of the spiritual world and how that works, and then how that relates to our interacting with the extraterrestrials and spirit. First of all, there is nothing for you to be sorry about. There is nothing at all to be sorry about. And second of all, those who teach that the light, going into any light is a trap, are those that do not trust the light. Trust the light because God in his great power will not deceive you. And I know that you've heard that it is a deception. I am sure that if you are heading into a light that does not feel positive or does not feel right or feels negative, you would not go into it anyway. And there is no trap. The trap is Earth itself. <laughs> Earth is your trap. And once you leave it, you are freed from it. It's not that there's a trap that will keep you here. Why would God allow such a thing? I know that there is free will, but he has control over the universe, all the universes, and all things that happen. And if he saw this, he would definitely put an end to it. And the people that speak about this are trying to make you afraid of the light. They're trying to guide you away from it so that you will look somewhere else for truth. Why would you want to look anywhere but the light for the truth? So they are not of the light when they disparage it. Please do not believe these conspiracy theories. That is darkness at work in its greatest and most deceptive ways. To tell you that God himself as a beam of light is a trap. Do not believe it. Mm. Now, yes, Satan has said, I can appear as a a figure of light before you, an angel of light before you. But as you get closer to that angel of light, 
the symbolism is that he is what is the best for you. But what is truth is that he will only seem like an angel until you believe that he is, and then he is not. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to you? Yes, thank you. So when, when our spirits leave our bodies, oh, yeah. <clears throat> When Those the spirit, who are, yes. No, please, please continue. Thank you. I just want to say when the spirits leave the body, they're eternal. Your spirit is eternal. And it goes into an eternal place. It does not get caught in a trap or another planet or a place that God does not desire it to go. For he has created the soul he has created the spirit, and it goes right where he wants it to go because he know, knows who you are. It will go to the oversoul, what you might call heaven. It will go mm -hmm. somewhere because it is eternal. The energy of God is eternal. Energy is what God is, and energy is what the soul is. It is a spiritual energy. And it will last forever. And do not worry about where it's going. It's going to a good place. It's not going to any place or being rerouted by anyone or anything. So you can be assured that your faith in God is pure. He loves you and your spirit is his. And no one else can manipulate it. So when somebody is born a quote unquote star seed, in other words, their soul comes from an extraterrestrial race. I don't even know if that's really real, but um, it is. so then, okay. So when that person dies physically, that soul, that star seed goes back to their planet or do they go to a level in the spirit? No, world? no, no. This thing is this. There are star seeds because there are energies that are greater than your own. And they come and volunteer to be part of you to bring about a greater future than you might want. It is a sacrifice that they make. And when they mm -hmm. pass on, they go to the oversoul like everyone else. God owns their mm -hmm. spirit the same as he owns yours. But their energies and their thought processes are different. They come from a more advanced place, and that is why they are here now, to help you to keep your world safe, to keep your world growing in light, and not to see it destroyed. Okay, so they might eventually go back to the planet that they originated from? After the oversoul? If they wish. They have many decisions mm -hmm. to make when when they return to the oversoul or heaven or whatever you want to call it. They can mm -hmm. stay there for a million years if they wish. Okay. And Gabriel, many people say that for each archangel, like Archangel Michael, Archangel Raphael, Archangel Gabriel, that you are assigned certain, like if we have certain specific needs, like we should ask for a specific archangel. Can you please share if that's true? And what would yours, what would somebody ask for, for you if they had, what need would somebody call? What is your uh, specialization? Let me tell you that angels are all made in God's image as perfect beings, and they can do whatever God asks them to do. And they can grant the wishes of people if that is God's will. You do not have to ask for a specific angel for specific gifts. Of course, some may be better at one thing than another. But we all can do all things for you. God gave us this ability. So you call on whoever you wish. 
And if they need help, they will call on the experts. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, of course, I have. I would spend hours talking with you, but I must um, go to let other people ask questions. Thank you so much. Much love. Well, I want to add to what the, she was asking and say that we are all created equal as angels, archangels, whatever you want to say. We are all here for you. We were made to serve the people of, of the universe, and especially humans. You were one of the first species that we learned to help. But let me tell you, you may have your favorites, and there are card tarot cards that you have that say, this angel is the, in charge of this, and this angel's in charge of that. But call on us. We are all in charge of your well-being, and that is not a lie. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your love. Thank you. Blessings. Are there Blessings. any more Thank questions? Quite a few, actually. I'd like to read a few from the YouTube chat. Uh, Brian Sims asks if the angels oversee galactic councils. The angels oversee where they are needed. If we are called by the galactic council, why shouldn't we go? If we are called by any alien group, why shouldn't we make ourselves available? We are beings that like to help and like to keep busy and you definitely do that for us <laughs> thank you i believe um micheline is next in the queue can you unmute micheline well while she's trying to unmute Oh, there she is. Yeah, go ahead. Is there someone there? Hello? She seemed to unmute for a second, but she's having... There she uh, is. Hello. I'm sorry about that. I'm having technical problems with my phone. Um, yes, thank you for coming, Gabriel. And oh, uh, I'm... Welcome. And thank you, Eva, for calling upon Gabriel. It was just uh, serendipity here. So, um, well, I have one person very close to me who's struggling with depression, and I need a little bit of guidance. I, I do have some training in galactic Reiki, and I'm using that quite frequently, and some white magic. But it seems like there's a lot of negativity or darkness around that person. I'm Perhaps this is, is also something that, others are struggling with, you know, maybe with family members who are not quite aware of the other dimensions. And how can we best help these people? First of all, you are doing the right thing if you are praying for them first. Mm -hmm. And sending them Reiki energy is good. Mm -hmm. But prayer is a power above that and greater than that. But also... They must believe that help can reach them. Mm. But help can reach them even if they don't believe it can. Because there are those that have been snatched out of darkness by the light. And they didn't even believe. But it was their time for a change. A time for God to intercede. So let me tell you this. In this particular situation, mm -hmm. I see that this person is depressed for personal reasons, for reasons that they hold themselves accountable for. Okay. And they need to know that they're already forgiven. Okay. They are already forgiven. God has already forgiven that situation. 
And now they have to forgive themselves. But that is a hard conversation to have with someone who is sad. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you must say to them, I know that you're sad. I know that you are going through something and I don't claim to know what it is or how you feel really. But I can tell you this. God has let me know that you are already forgiven. God has let me know that you are valuable to him. God has let me know that he wants to be a part of your life. And God is there. Now they have to accept it. They have to do some actions too. Remember... When it comes to this kind of thing, they must also react. They must also do. It cannot be that you do all the actions and then they are all right. It is rare that God snatches people out of depression or out of their ways. It happens occasionally, but do not expect that in this case. Okay. But I do see that with your good example and positivity and prayer and asking those around you to pray as well, that this can be taken care of. Okay. Believe. Do not doubt that this can be taken care of. And that it goes for many of you out there that have the same situations. Do not doubt God is powerful. Prayer is powerful. Prayer is powerful. But Thank you so remember, much. Mm -hmm. they have to make an action too. They have to acknowledge the problem. They have to acknowledge something. I'm not sure what in this case. Mm -hmm. But they do have to acknowledge that to get their help. And sometimes they're not willing to do that. But I think that eventually this person will acknowledge that they need help. They probably already have. But they had not acknowledged that there is help or that they believe that there is help. That's what they have to do next. Very well. Thank you so much. Very well. Be Much black. love. Much love. Next, we have a question from the YouTube chat. Peter P. writes, how can we strengthen the gift of precognitive inner knowing? How can you strengthen that? Is by getting to know yourself better. But it seems like you already know that already. The thing is, God can bring more energy to these things. But let me, in this case, I'm going to tell you this. I see that you are someone that um, is an intellect. And sometimes intellectuals find it difficult to do things without intellectual stimulation. You are someone that will find a way on the web that will actually teach you how to do this as well. But you do not even need that. You just need to believe that you already have it. Because you do. You already have everything that you need and more. Believe it and it will arrive. You will be surprised. I, there's people in this room that you may not even see. But I can see some of them. But they already have many things that they need. All they have to do is draw on their, their gifts from God that they have gotten and believe in themselves. And they do great things. And they are great people. Thank and you. And some of them, some people say, well, I... 
I have so many sins and so many things. You, you don't. Look positively on yourself. These things that you call sins, the mankind has told you that. Mankind has said dancing and drinking and different things can be sin, sin, sin. And the world wants you to be caught up in that negativity, that sex is sin and all these things. But do not be caught up in the negativity of all this. It's all negativity. It's all being said that it's wrong. But if you are true and you are not hurting people and your love is full, where is your sin if you have a drink? Where is your sin if you are sexually active and not hurting anyone? <clears throat> You must know yourself and know your who you are with. But some of these things are there to hold you back from your joy. Do not be a sad person because you feel you cannot do the things that are in your heart that are not negative but are part of who you are as an individual. God made you who you are. You can have many facets in your personality that do not match what the world says is right, but that doesn't make it wrong. I've seen so many sad people because the world has put them down and put them in a place where they say that they, they cannot be who they are. They cannot be what they want to be. From the very beginning of their lives, you can't do that. You can't be that. But it's not true. You can be what God made you to be whatever you want to be. He has so many creative abilities and they're all in you somewhere. <laughs> use them. The ones that interest you, use them. Now there is such a thing as being uh, too much of a good thing. Moderation, but not getting drunk all the time. But that's not the sin of the alcohol. That's the sin of the person. <laughs> and alcohol is not sinful. But if you believe you're sinful, then you have to have that forgiven. If you believe you have sinned, ask for forgiveness. But... Try to live your life knowing what inside of you is right and wrong. For your, you tell yourself, God has told you already what is right and what is wrong, and you know it already. You feel bad if you're going to do something wrong. You, most people do unless you have no conscience. And that can be stolen from you as well, but we won't go into that now, but is there any other questions? Oh, we've got quite a few. I'm gonna read one from the uh, YouTube chat from Lilypad. She asks, what does it mean when the angels send messages in numbers? I don't know what they mean. <laughs> All right. There is a little book of angel numbers. And uh, if you look in that, it will, it will help you. Because we help to give that information to a few people. And they made a little book of angelic numbers. It's like numerology from the angels. And look in there and you will understand what they're trying to say to you. Now the reason why they would use numbers. 
may have to do with also numerology. But first look at the angel definition before you look at the numerology definitions. Numbers are important. Numbers have power and meaning. But you cannot live your life by it necessarily unless these numbers are coming to you every day. Uh, and then I would pay attention. So that is what I would suggest you do, is look up the angel numerology. I, I do not know who wrote it, but there is a book. All right, thank you. Um, next in the queue is L or Ellie. Greetings. He greetings, Gabriel. Um, my question is regarding the plasma technologies that have been recently applied all over the world, and I started to apply them in my country. Uh, what is the main thing that we should have in mind um, regarding our intention when we start working with the plasma? Plasma is a life force in some ways. Is, is that how you regard it? Uh, yes, like a little sons that help and make shields and uh, heal and help grow. Mo plasma can be molded into many things because you have plasma within you. All beings that are humanoid or have some plasma in them. So, but it is also a creative element. And when you're using plasma, be very careful because you are creating something with it that but from what i see from you you're doing just very positive things so that is very good do not worry about it you can use plasma to create pretty much anything that you're uh, that you would like but just to make sure you you identify uh it properly with the person you're going to use it with Yes, that is my main uh, uh, thing. I aim to help people um, build their in intention in the right way. Very good. You need to know nothing more. And thank you. You're Much welcome. Love. David, you're next in the queue. Hello. Greetings. Hi, how are you? I'm well. Very good. I am um, interested in about um, protection. I uh, have a friend that I helped release a demon, and uh, she ended up bringing it back. She wanted to hang out yesterday because I'm leaving town, so I went to go see her. And I'm wondering if, if anything well, well, there's two things. I'm wondering how to protect yourself properly so people know how to protect yourself in that situation if you're around someone that's possessed, that has an entity in, in them. And if anything happened last night, um, I protected myself, so I think I'm okay. But she, she, she was in a good mood, and then she got really mad. She was trying to get me to eat, and I heard that uh, every time I would go over to her house and eat with her she would cook and it would taste really good but I would get sick and I asked about it and they said that the food could be cursed so I didn't want to eat with her and she got really mad at me for not eating with her even though I told her ahead of time I wasn't going to eat so I'm just wondering about if anything happened food being cursed there would have to be a curse put on it for it to be cursed if it is just regular food, it is not cursed. If she's a negative person, um, the negativity is within her and not on the food. Now, you have done protection on yourself. This is a good thing. You also know many kinds of protection that you can use. You may cover yourself with light. You may use the ruch because you learned how to do that. There are several different things that you can do to protect yourself. And many people have their own ways to do it. So as long as you uh, protect yourself from her, you cannot be harmed by her. 
Okay. But the thing that's making you sick is not the food, but the spirit in which it was prepared, the spirit in the room, the spirit she gives off. That is what makes you sick. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? A little bit. I don't fully understand it. Of course not. How can somebody's spirit make you sick? Well, they're projecting negativity. They're projecting something that is not part of your makeup. And so that does not mix with you, and so it makes you nauseated. So even when she seems to be in a great mood, and maybe she's just pretending to be nice? Her, and no, she can be in a good mood. She can switch over to her negative side. She can have positivity. Everyone in this world of yours has positive and negative in them. They can switch to positive or negative if they wish. If she is showing you positivity, that's wonderful. If she happens to switch over to the negative side, I would run and get out of there because you are not going to benefit from that in any way, shape, or form. Your spirit is positive, and if it comes up against this negativity, A, you'll become uncomfortable, you'll become nauseous, you'll become very, uh, feeling very creepy. Okay. Well, I was happy to see her and had a good moment, and then... It changed. Well, I'm sorry about that, but it was her that changed because she wanted to control the situation and she could not, and so she turned to the negative side. Yes, and I was aware that she still probably had some kind of entity because... Of course. ...to take yes. care of herself. I tried I, to help. I have no doubt. Awesome. Thank you for the guidance. And... All right, we have a very few well. Questions. Continue. We have a few more questions in the That's YouTube well. chat. Yudiaman Shulka writes: Can we expect a major archaeological finding in the course of the next year or two? Something that can rock the academic community and make scientists seriously rethink ancient human history? Yes. But let me tell you this, when th something of that nature happens in this day and age, they withhold it from the public a little while first. They want to understand it before they try to uh, explain it. There is already an archaeological find that is making them crazy, and they are not understanding it and they are not going to share it with the world until they do. So that I can, I'll tell you, there will also be other finds as well. Thank you. The next question is from Chris A, who writes, I've heard a theory that most who want ET to come to Earth have already had lives or will have a life on a different planet before long and not people who have only had life here on Earth. Is this true? Mm, I No, not really. Humans decide in the over, oversoul where they want to go. Humans decide if they want to be human. Uh, in the oversoul, you are a spirit. You are an energy. And you decide if you want to be an Octorian energy or a human energy or Syrian energy, and many times uh, it is uh, your decision if you are human or alien. Now, let me tell you this also. Um, your, uh, when you're in the Oversoul, you create many scenarios. You are part of many things, and it is a very creative place where you can see your dreams but you can't really live them until you go to a place. So to experience reality and learn, you must come to a world. 
and that is your choice. But many people stay in uh, the Oversoul or Heaven forever. They don't ever come back. They have one experience with life, and that was it for them. But many, or I should say 99%, are travelers and want to experience and feel life and experience uh, being those kinds of beings and experience the understanding and knowledge of it. It gives them, it, it just brings that, that to fullness. So they love going to different worlds. They may take a hundred or a couple hundred years off in the middle, but that's their prerogative. Thank you. Amanda's question is next. Amanda? Hello, Gabriel. Are, Are you, you able to hear me? Uh, I cannot hear you. Okay. Can anyone hear her? Hello? Hello. I hear you now. Okay, fantastic. Hi, Gabriel. I just feel this overwhelming closeness to you, and I wanted to know what that stemmed from. I have a feeling we probably work together a lot. Yes. yes. There, I could go into a great explanation of why we feel very close to one another. But we have, um, I've, helped, I've helped you many times, but you are also part of my kin in some ways. So... Okay. It is that we are very close, yes. Okay, that's kind of the vein I was thinking, but yes, that helps. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yes, Here? there's a question in the room. Oh, great, let's take that next. <clears throat> if you're talking about um, individuals choosing to return to lives, when you have, um, uh, uh, the best way to say that when you have connections with other beings on those particular lives, whether it's a human, alien, whatever it is, is do you you that's when you choose to want to? Eat. Yes, there are some. There are times when you will be in the Oversoul, and there will be several of, of those that you've lived lives with before, and you will might want to experience them in a different kind of body or a different kind of experience. Say you were mother and father in, in, or a mother and child in one experience. You want to be lovers in another lifetime or perhaps good friends and experience or a brother-sister relationship or something of this nature. Um, you may find that these people may be very open to these different kinds of experiences with you and to learning uh, lessons about how this kind of life is and how it how they experience it as well. You're welcome. Sure, are you ready? Yes. Hello. Greetings. Hey. Um, well. So many questions have, have popped out, so I'm going to choose only one of them. Um, the thing is, I know that there are different entities like archangels, ascended masters, and creator beings, and each one of them has like a specific goal. Like I know that uh, Toph, which is a creator being, I know that he's like in charge of the Akashic Records. I know that. Saint Germain, that I'm pretty sure that is one of those categories, is in charge of the violent flame. Um, I was wondering if each one of them actually have a mission. Like I know that Archangels also have uh, missions. Like Raphael is about absolutely and stuff like that. Just because uh, you are in charge of something in the spiritual realm does not mean you cannot return to the physical realm or be in charge of other things uh, as well. But remember, with great responsibility, uh, with great, with uh, these great things, there comes great responsibility. And um, 
There are those that help St. Germain. There are those that help Toth. They are not doing this on their own. They are being helped, but they are in charge. They are the supervisor. They are the manager, whatever you want to call it. But there are others that can help them with providing these services. There are others that help them with because they have the understanding that is necessary to help them with this. So is that like a universal mission given to entities on on that uh, areas like archangels, greater beings, ascended masters, or is it something like? Well, it's given, but they must accept. They they have to accept it. It's not that they're forced to take it, but they do accept it if they, and it is a great honor to have it offered to them. But they don't have to accept it. But you're yes, there are they ascended masters creator beings th different things of this nature they have their roles to play and god does send them to do specific things now and then but just as human beings they have free will you can say yes you can say no and some people when god says will you help me do this they say no and so he has to find someone else to do it so try to remember to say yes when god asks <laughs> can you like if I'm, I'm going to give you a certain name can you tell me what is that creator being purpose or archangel like the universal mission is it allowed it's not allowed for me to tell the whole community or the whole world about something that is should be spoken to them in private I see. Can you tell us about your universal mission? What is this that you are in, in charge I do of? What, I do what I am told to do, but as Gabriel, I was a messenger of God to the earth and to many places. I am a messenger, but I have other gifts as well. Just like all the angels can do all things, I can do the healing, I can do the messenger work, I can do... Um, just about anything that God really needs. I, Michael is a leader in the armies. He has his armed forces, but he also has other specialties as well. So we all have our things, but I can do most things that God asks me to do. Okay, thank you very much and much love to you. Thank you. Much love to you as well. All right. We we're are getting, getting close to closing time. Is there a lot more questions? There are two. I thought maybe we'd take one and ask for a blessing before we wrap up. Well, if there's only two, we'll take them. All right. Uh, Lilypad asks if you could um, speak about the um, meaning of diamonds in dreams. Diamonds? Diamonds oh, I'm sorry, Liney asked that. What? And my mistake. Liney asked that question. Diamonds? Diamonds mm -hmm. are the hardest of all. Uh, the diamonds are uh, one of the hardest materials that you will find. And it's, it's depending on how you dream about them, they can mean different things. It could mean that uh, they are your rock, that they are your fortune, that they are because they are very valuable. But they can also mean that it's something you cannot penetrate. You cannot get through it. You have a diamond surface or a diamond, and you need to get through uh, some kind of... And you have to get through that diamond to get where you need to go. And sometimes it seems like you're up against the very hardest surface. But it can also mean very positive things. It can mean um, that someone is endeared to you. It can mean that um, uh, you are going to be coming into wealth or that your wealth is leaving. It can mean very many things. I would have to hear the dream itself to be able to interpret it the way it is meant to be. 
Thank you. Um, Peter P. asks, are Thoth and St. Germain part of the same life stream? Who? Thoth or Toth and St. Germain. Well, um, that's, uh, there is some energy in Toth that is in St. Germain, but there is no energy from St. Germain that is in Toth. Uh, it's a very complex, that's a very complex question. Uh, but both have some, uh, actually, I am mistaken. There is some of St. Germain in Tall because there is some uh, Christ energy in both of them. All right, I believe that concludes our question, questions today. Thank you so much for taking so many of them. And uh, I'm wondering if you could uh, give us a final blessing before you depart. I will use the angelic language, if that is all right. Please. Tierra sanzo voturia shato adonai, alala shoshushia shalom. Mahati tara washes yende dia tabu. Muhuri arara sanzo vasitas. Ariengayawandoayashi Sikasha and Oda Adonai Kabas Kosham Ditari. I will give you a partial interpretation, I won't do the whole thing. But I ask God to bless this community and to bring unity, love, and energy to it so that you may rise up and do your missions as God has seen fit to give them to you and to live your lives and be as much of yourself as you can be for that is a great joy to know that you are who God wants you to be and you are yourself and you are not ashamed of who you are amen Thank you very much. I will go now. Hello. Hello. Welcome back, Ooh. Jim. Thank you. How are? How is everybody? Uh, this was fascinating. Right. Thank you. Very Thank good. you. Oh, did you have a good session? Yes. Oh, yeah, as always. Who else Very has good. blessings? Are there any blessings in the room there, Jim? Oh, I, actually, I, uh, Angie left. All right. How, anybody in the uh, webinar who wishes to share you a blessing? blessing. <laughs> uh, All right. Then, Karen, are you ready to uh, share some announcements? Yes. Hi. Can you hear me? Can you hear me or no? Yes, yes, I hear you. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Um, well, just for everyone, just to know that uh, coming up, we have the Hukalo, the third, um, the third Hukalo retreat, which will be in New York, and it will be on the 16th and through the 21st of August. And you can sign up on hukalo.org on the website. It's four hundred dollars for the five days, and then. Um, you will have access to galactic Reiki classes, channeling classes, um, channelings every day with Jim and with Max and all kinds of wonderful activities there uh, in New York. Where, what is the place in New York that it is, Jim? Danceville. It's in Dansville. Dansville, New York, all, right. All meals will be provided and all um, housing. housing. 
We'll oh, yeah, right. All housing and food are provided during the days, and you also have the option to stay an extra day uh, on the beginning or the end of the event if you really want to have some. Yeah, so if you want to stay an extra day, some people come for, uh, some people do readings on the first and last days or whatever. Right. There are readings that I schedule throughout, but some people like to have uh, personal readings um, since they're there. Perfect. And then this has also been a uh, paid webinar. So it's for the people that are in the Hukalo Club, and that is $10 a month, and you have all the access to the activities happening within Hukalo. It goes to support our running uh, costs, but also to uh, make sure that you get a front row seat in Jim's room when Jim is channeling. So that's also on hukalo.org, and you can uh, sign up for that on uh, join the webinar is the tab that's on on the website. And lastly, we have an ongoing channeling class that's run on uh, in Zoom. It's every Friday night. It's run by Francois de Bruc, and he's doing a marvelous job. And that's free for everyone. You can go to the Facebook group, which is Hukalo Channeling Practice Group, and you can ask to join, and you're welcome to join the channeling practice group. So if you've wanted to channel and you know, wanted to have some help with that, you're welcome to join that. So that's all I have. Okay. Thanks everybody Thank for you. being here. Love oh. you and hope to see you sometime soon. I'm not channeling next week. Right. Next but, week is Lou Martin. Uh, but the week after that. Right. Jim will be back in two weeks and next week we have Lou Martin channeling. Okay. And, Very and, good. Our, Jim? and just very soon on the website, we'll have a full list of everybody. We're already booked almost through October. So we have a, a big list of people coming in and some very nice, exciting people. So be sure to check Excellent. the website, hukalo.org. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. All right, have Trinity a great day, like, everybody. Trinity would oh. like to give a blessing before we Oh, talk very off good. Air. Thank you. And then if you could stay in the chat, uh, one person has a question for you, Jim, before we unplug. Yes. So Trinity, you're next. Thank you. This is a, a prayer for Gabriel and for Elijah and for everybody. May God bless you and keep you. May God make his face shine upon you and give you peace. Thank you. And yes. okay. <laughs> Jim, thank you very much again for it. There was so much information in this in this particular webinar. Oh, my goodness. Uh, <laughs> But thank you, and thank you to Karen and to Mark, uh, always doing a great job for moderating. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, Angie wants to give a blessing also. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Go ahead. Au aswa i, au aswa au mwa i, mamu ui ya wa a, i mwa i smuwi wa, nya mwa smuwi da wa i wa na. We extend our hand in friendship, although you may not know us yet or be familiar with us, we are friendly and we are of good nature. And we wish to extend to you the gifts of, of friendship. There are more than one things that come about when you give this gift. And so we hope that you will return it to us as we have presented it. Hmm, interesting. Who was that? I have no idea. All righty. All right, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jim. Enjoy have a great day. day. Thank, you, Bye. thank you, Jim, and thank everyone for joining us. And with that, we will go off the air. All right.